5.4 Factor and Solve Polynomial Equations Yes, I know, I had to show this comic again. I really, really like it. And just in case you didn't understand it the first time, you get to see it again. So we're going to start off with factoring. And as I've said many times by now, if you can factor out something in common, do it first. And so in A, I clearly see that a Y is in common. So factor that out. Y cubed divided by Y leaves you with Y squared minus 4. Y squared divided by Y is Y minus 12Y divided by Y just leaves you with the 12. Now look inside the parentheses and see if you can go down any further. So let's try and factor this. We get a Y and a Y. Well, why don't we try a 6 and a 2? How about a negative 6 and a positive 2? Yep. That seems like it works. And that is my final answer for factoring. This is how I factor. I'm not asking you to solve, just factor. Done. Now let's look at this one. Well, I seem to have a 3 in all of them. Um, but I also have an x in all of them. So let's factor a 3x out. 3x cubed divided by 3x leaves me with an x squared. 30 divided by 3 is 10 x squared divided by x is just x. 75 divided by 3 is 25. And x divided by x is 1. So I just leave that. Again, let's try and factor the parentheses part if we can. x and x, 25 would be a 5 and a 5. Oh, this is looking good. And that would be my final answer. You could also rewrite it like this with the x plus 5 the quantity squared. This is great too. I'm happy with either of the two answers. In this last one, a 5 is in common, and the biggest G in common is a G cubed, right? And so 5G to the fifth divided by 5G cubed is 1G squared. Remember, when you divide, you subtract exponents if the bases are the same. And then 80 divided by 5 is 16. Now look at that. That's the difference of two squares, right? Because 16 is 4 times 4. So when it's the difference of two squares, I must factor that down to get as far as I can. And note the difference here. One of these is plus and one of these is minus so that I get rid of the middle term. So this I cannot write in any other way. This is the only way to write this answer versus this one where I have a plus and a plus. You'll see that I still get a middle term in that case. Only when one of the factors in a, is a plus and you have the same exact factor with a minus, that's when you get rid of the middle term. These are two formulas that you just need to know and we will be practicing them right now. So first of all, how do I identify these things? Well, basically, I just look at my terms. Let's see, look at this one, and we notice that if we have 3x and we were to cube it, we would get this. And if we had 5 and we were to cube 5, we would get this. And so you notice that we have something cubed plus something cubed. And so let me just write the equations we're going to be using right up here. So we have a cubed plus b cubed can be factored down into a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. And then a cubed minus b cubed can be factored down into a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And you'll notice when you're memorizing these, if the plus is here, then the minus is here. And if the minus is here, then the plus is here. And whatever this sign is, is the same thing as this one. So I don't know if that'll help you memorize it, but that's how I remember. So anyway, this would obviously be my A, and this would obviously be my B, because I'm saying what cubed plus what cubed. So that could be factored into A plus B, which is just 3x plus 5 times a squared, which is just 3x squared, minus a times b plus b squared. And then I just leave that 3x plus 5. And then 3x squared is 3x times 3x is 9x squared 
minus 15x plus 25. And you'll never be able to do more with these. That will be all the way factored. Now in this next one, before I even start, I always ask myself, can I take anything out? And this one, absolutely, I can take out the negative 2, but I can also take out the d squared, which is going to leave me with something much, much easier to work with. I am left with a d cubed minus 250 divided by 2 is 125. And now I notice that this is just d cubed, and this is just again my 5 cubed and so this obviously is my a and this is my b in the formula and so now I'm going to use this one now I just let that negative 2 d squared hang out and then to factor this part I'm going to use the formula okay so just let that hang out and then I have a minus b which is in this case d minus 5 times a squared is d squared plus ab which is 5d plus b squared which is 5 squared and that is my final answer all right now I want to factor by grouping so I want to look for something that's in common I see that in the first two terms I have an r and then I see in my second two terms, I have an S. So I'm going to try and use that to get started. So I'm going to factor an R out of just the first two terms. And so I'm left with A plus B plus. And then I'm going to try and factor an S, which was in common, out of this last two terms. So I'm left with an A plus B. Now I'm not quite done because I look at this and I'm like, oh wow, there's an a plus b here and there's an a plus b here. In other words, I could factor the a plus b out. I can factor the a plus b out of this guy and I'm left with r times a plus b divided by a plus b is just r. And s times a plus b divided by a plus b is just s. And that is how I get two things multiplied together equaling that. So this is factor by grouping. Now, while we're at it, let me just look at this question real quickly once again. I wonder if any of you said to yourself, oh, I see an A in common here, and then I see a B in common here. Let's see if you were one of those people, if you would get the same answer. So since I see this and this have the common A, I'm going to just rewrite this so that everything that's grouping together is next to each other. So you might see that I'm saying that this has the A in common, so I wanted to put those together. And then these have the B in common, so I wanted to put those together. And then I just take the A out of that, so I have the R plus S left, plus, and then these two guys have that B in common, and I'm left with R plus S. And so now you see that that r plus s is in common. So I can factor that out. And when I factor that out, I'm still left with the a from this first term plus, and then I'm left with the b from this term. And so you'll see that I got the same answer either way. So sometimes when you're factoring by grouping, you have to reshuffle things in order to get the common terms together. So since we just did factor by grouping, you can probably guess this is going to be a factor by grouping question. I see in these two terms, I actually have a 9t squared in common. So 27 divided by 9 is 3t plus 45 divided by 9 is just 5. And then, and then what do I have in common in these two? Well, nothing really, but I'm going to just factor the negative out. And when I do that, I'm left with 3t plus 5. And you'll see, and you'll see that really conveniently, that is in common. Now, look at this really carefully. I'm warning you. 3t plus 5. Now, what do you have left? You obviously have the 9t squared left. But everybody always forgets this silent 1 that's there. Minus 1. Don't be one of those people that forgets it. I'm warning you right now. Now look at this. Am I done? No. 
Not quite, because isn't this a difference of two squares? This is 3t times 3t, and this is 1 times 1, and it's the difference of those. So I can factor this guy just a bit further. And now I am done. I cannot go any further than that. All right, again, is there anything in common? Certainly, there's a 10 in common. Factor it out. And then you're left with x to the fourth minus 1. Am I done? Hmm, this is actually x squared times x squared, and this is actually 1 times 1, so that's a difference of two squares also. I know it's a little different. Let the 10 hang out. Don't forget about the 10. You cannot just drop it off. So now I have the difference of two squares, x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1. But I'm not even done yet, because look at this. This is the difference of two squares also. This question just is going on and on. All right, so let the 10 hang out. We can't do anything with this, so leave that. When I have the sum of two squares, I can't do it, only with the difference, because I need a plus and a minus. And I have x plus 1 times x minus 1. All right, now I can't do anything more. Go to this one. Is there anything in common? Well, there's definitely a 3 in common, and then there is an m squared in common. So factor that out. 3m to the 12th divided by 3m squared is m to the 10th power plus 54 divided by 3 is 18m to the 5th plus 51 divided by 3 is 17. And so can I go any further? Hmm. I'm thinking actually that I can. And why am I thinking that I can? Because I'm thinking to myself that m to the 10th power is the same thing as m to the 5th times m to the 5th, right? Because same basis at exponents. And since this is an m to the 5th and this is an m to the 10th, I'm thinking they probably made it factorable. So let's try. m to the 5th times m to the 5th is m to the 10th. And then a 17 and a 1 and then a plus and a plus would make the 18m to the fifth. So that I can't go any further. And that's my answer there. What are the real solutions of this? So may as well just set it equal to zero like I'm used to doing. Minus 12x cubed plus 16x equals zero because I scooted these both over. And then is there anything in common? Well, there's a 2 and there's an x, so two x in common. Once I factor that out, I get x to the fourth minus six x squared plus eight equals zero. And so let's see if I can factor this. Now I'm not intimidated by this problem. x to the fourth is just x squared times x squared, and you'll see that that x squared's hanging out, just like I was saying in the last problem. And so how do I get the eight? A four and a two maybe? and a negative and a negative, well that makes a uh, positive eight. So that works. So now I just set each of the factors equal to zero. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, you didn't factor this all the way. You're right, I did not factor this all the way. This could be x plus two times x minus two, but since I'm setting them all to zero, it doesn't matter when I stop. I don't have to fully factor. So this would just leave me with x equals 0. This would leave me with x squared equals 4. Now just don't forget, that means x equals plus or minus root 4, which is 2. And this one I have x squared equals 2, x equals plus or minus root 2. So in this question, I have how many solutions? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 solutions. They didn't ask me how many I have, but I just want to show you something. When you have a fifth degree, you can have up to five real solutions. Doesn't mean that you have exactly five real solutions, and we'll talk about how you get that later, but when you have a fifth degree, you can have up to five real solutions. You have been asked to design a rectangular basin capable of holding 36 cubic feet of water. Okay, so the volume is 36. The basin side and bottom should be one foot thick. So that means that this is one foot, this is one foot, this is one foot, and this is one foot. Its outer length should be twice its outer width and outer height. 
So this is 2x, and this is x, and this is x. All right, the drawing is helping us out a lot. If the drawing wasn't here, definitely draw it ahead of time, otherwise this problem is so hard. What are the outer dimensions of the basin? All right, so basically we want our volume to be 36, but how do we find the volume of the water that can be in here? Well, this whole side is 2x, right? So the part inside of it is like here. And remember that these are all 1, right? just like it was up there. And so this side length is actually 2x minus 1 minus 1, 2x minus 2 for that side length, right? Remember that there is a hollowed out portion there. And then when you're doing, so that same thing's gonna happen on this side here. So this side length is actually x minus 2. And then the height, look out for the height because the height, you don't actually take anything off the top. You see, you only take something off the bottom here. So that's only x minus 1. So this again was the length, this was the width, and this was the height. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because this is hollowed out. So this is what it looks like. So you'd have the 1 on both sides here. For this width right here, you have the one on both sides here, but for the height here, you'll see that you don't take anything off the top because you're filling the water all the way up to the top. And so that's the volume, and you know the volume is 36. Now how do I solve this? Well, I have to set it equal to zero, and in order to do that, I've got to multiply all this stuff out. So I'm gonna do it just like I was doing in the last section. Let's let that 2x minus two hang out for a second, and let's go ahead and just FOIL this part. So when we do that, we get x squared minus x minus two x is minus three x plus two equals 36. And now when I do the next part, I've got a first distribute the 2x to all the terms, so I get 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x, and then I've got to distribute that negative 2 to all the terms, and so I get minus 2x squared plus 6x minus 4 equals 36. Please, guys, please write out all these steps. If you try and keep this in your head, you're going to make careless errors, and I don't want you missing points that you don't need to. So just write it all out. So now combine like terms. Well, there's only one of the x cubed, so 2x cubed, and then how many of the x squareds do I have? Negative 6 minus 2 is minus 8x squared, and then how many of the x's do I have? Plus 4 plus 6 is plus 10x, and then minus 4, and I'm going to scoot the 36 over here, minus 40 equals 0. And now I have four terms, so I think I'm going to go with factor by grouping and see if that will work. So I'm going to just try and see if I can take something out of the first two, because I see that I can take a 2x squared out of those two, and I'm left with, what are we left with? x minus 4, and then we could take a 10 out of these guys. And look how nice this one's going to work out for us, because now I have that x minus 4 in common. And so I'm running out of room, I'm gonna go over here. And so I'm gonna factor that x minus four out of both terms. And so what do I have left? I just have that two x squared left plus 10 equals zero. Now set each of those factors equal to zero, x minus four equals zero or two x squared plus 10 equals zero. Again, this was not fully factored, but I don't care since I'm solving in this one. I'm not asking you to factor. So this is x equals 4 or 2x squared equals negative 10. Now right off the bat, you're going to see here that this is going to be an imaginary number, right? Because basically I have x squared equals negative 5 and that would just be an i, right? So in this case, I can cross that out because my side lengths cannot be imaginary. And so 4 is my only answer. So what are the outer dimensions of the basin? Well, 2x is going to be 2 times 4 is 8 feet by x is just 4 feet. So it's going to be 8 feet by 4 feet by four feet, and that's my answer there.
And that's it for this lesson. Bye.